What's up everyone, it's Chris. Um, I'm going to be going over the Elite XC Heat, I believe it's called, event this Saturday night. The main event being uh, Kimbo versus Ken Shamrock. Um, starting, um, first off, I just want to say I'm going to start with the main event and work my way down. Because in case I run short on time, I want to make sure that the uh, main fights get the most analysis. I think those are the ones that the fans would be most interested in. Um, so, with that said, first fight. Main event, Kimbo versus Ken Shamrock. Kimbo's coming off the TKO win over James Thompson. I'm sure most of you saw on CBS earlier this year. Um, it was ex anticipated to be an easy win, but it didn't turn out that way. Um, he had a harder time than was expected, but he got the win nonetheless. Ken Shamrock is coming off a loss to Robert Buzzberry. He was TKO'd in the first round. Um, I just rewatched that fight recently, and... Uh, Still having trouble finding the punch that really hurt Ken. He got hit with a glancing blow, but it didn't look like it was enough to put him out. So I don't know if, what that says about his chin, if he's that far gone. If that's the case, this fight is going to be disastrous for him. But um, yeah, he's Ken's own five, I believe, in his last five fights. 44 years old. Not that age always determines what a fighter has left, as uh, evidenced by Randy Couture. But Ken was never quite the fighter that Randy was nor is he now. Um, to be honest, I think this fight's pretty clear cut. Ken's being brought in because he has a big name, not because they think he's going to win the fight. Um, I believe Kimbo's going to win first round, TKO. It just depends on how long Ken's going to last. Uh, if he fights tentatively, he might make it three or four minutes. If he fights aggressively, he'll be gone in two to three, in my opinion. So, Kimbo, first round, TKO either way. Hopefully, Ken, if he loses, which I expect him to, will retire after this. He's given enough of himself to the sport. There's no point in continuing on at this point. Kimbo, um, if he wins here, I don't know, maybe Brett Rogers. I know that's been discussed before. And I know Brett wants to fight. I don't know if Kimbo does or not. But um, I think Elite XC's been hesitant to put him in there because they think Brett might win him, and Kimbo's their meal ticket. So we'll see. Next fight, Jake Shields defending the 170-pound welterweight Elite XC title versus uh, Paul Daly. Shields is coming off a TK or no, a first-round submission guillotine over Nick the Goat Thompson. That was for the title. Um, that was a fight I expected to be pretty even. I mean, I thought Shields would win, but I thought Thompson would give him a good test because uh, Thompson, although Thompson's not the biggest name and the most well-known, he's a good all-round fighter. Um, but Jake got in there, took him, put him down, guillotine, what, two, three minutes? It was over like that, so he looked great. Um, Paul Daly, not too long ago, had a win over Dwayne Bang Ludwig, knocked him out quick time, first round. In Elite XC, I was actually surprised how easily he beat Bang, because Bang's such a good kickboxer. Um, then he, I don't know if he had another fight or not, but quickly, shortly after, he announced he was retiring in his prime. Not quite sure what the reason was. Said he was burned out or something. I don't recall. I think it was probably just a contract thing. Um, he's had one fight since coming back, which is a relatively short time ago. Um, beat the guy, TKO'd him. Don't even know who he is, so I won't even mention his name. Um, I think Jake Shields is going to take this fight. Styles make fights. Got a ground fighter against a um, standing kickbox type fighter. Muay Thai. Paul Daly, that is. Um, plus Jake Shields is a bigger fighter. He's fought up at 183, 185, I believe. Daly was considering moving down to 160 earlier this year. So I think Shields has got the size and strength advantage, and with that, he'll use it to, you know, his uh, Daly's detriment. I believe he'll get Daly down, work him on the ground, punish him a little, and end up submitting him, maybe with a rear naked choke or something of, of that like, in, uh, I believe, the second round. Because Daly's... He may not be have a lot of ground skills, but he's a game fighter. So I think he could last till the second. But I just I don't know if he's gonna win or not. I just don't think that his style and his lack of a ground defense matches up well against Jake Shields. Um, from there, I don't really know where they're gonna do with Shields. He's pretty much beat most of the um, fighters in Elite XC at that division, so not sure where they're gonna go with him from there. Next fight, Andre Arlovsky versus Roy Nelson. Um, these are fighters that are being borrowed from Affliction, cross-promotion, which I believe is good. It's good for the sport. It's good exposure from both organizations. 
Arlovsky's coming off a third round TKO win over Ben Rothwell. He looked really good in that fight. Aggressive, which he always fights better when he's aggressive. He fought tentatively, tentatively against uh, Tim Sylvia before him. Didn't work out in his favor. Roy Nelson's coming off a TKO win over Brad Imes. I did not see that fight. But Nelson's been on a good run as of late, aside from a loss to Ben Rothwell a little over a year ago, I believe. He's been on a pretty good winning streak. Um, I think Arlovsky's going to take this one. Nelson, he's a good fighter, but I think Arlovsky's just on another level. He's more of an elite fighter, so to speak. Kind of cliche, but that's what it is. Um, Nelson's a game fighter. He, he can stand in there and hang pretty well. So, you know, I think Nelson's better on the ground. That's what I've read. He's a really good ground fighter as far as submission game. But Orlovsky can, you know, he should be able to defend himself well on the ground and get it back to a standing position if that happens. Like I said, Nelson's tough. So I'm going to pick Orlovsky. Could go to, to a decision, but I think a third round TKO is probably more likely. Maybe even earlier if he works Nelson's legs. I'm not for sure if Nelson can take a lot of leg kicks. But that's just speculation on my point. We shall see. So Orlovsky by a third round TKO. Um, next fight, Gina Carano versus Kelly Cobalt. Um, I'd like to say first off, I don't know anything about Kelly Cobalt. I looked at her record. She has a good record. She's been off for a year. She lost her last fight decision to Julie Ketsey, a fighter that Gina previously has beaten. Gina's last fight, I'm sure as you all recall, was a win over, um, Caitlin Young. TKO second round, also on that CBS card earlier this year. Since I don't know much about Cobalt, I can't really accurately um, assess how this fight's going to turn out, but uh, I don't believe they want Gina to lose, Elite XC that is. So I believe Cobalt's being brought in as an opponent. So with that being said, I'm going to go with Carano by second round TKO, just because I don't know Cobalt, I don't know how tough she is, so I'm just going to give her the benefit of the doubt until she makes it through the first round. But like I said, they want Gina to win. They're showcasing her, so uh, they're going to match up with an opponent. I'm sure they assume she'll be able to beat handily. Um, after this, if uh, Christine Cyborg wins, which I believe she's also fighting on the card, hopefully her and Gina will meet next. Two stand-up fighters. I know people think she's a real threat to Gina, as do I, and I think that's a fight a lot of people want to see. So hopefully we'll see that down the line. And the final fight on the televised card. Also, I'm only doing the televised card because I looked at the undercard. I don't know enough about a lot of the fighters to give a accurate analysis. Any picks I'd be making would be speculation. I don't really want to do that. Um, last fight, or first fight, is uh, Benji Razor Raddick versus Murillo Ninja Hula. Benji's coming off a TKO loss to Matt Horwich in IFL, where he held the title and Horwich knocked him out, surprisingly. I think Raddick, most people expected him to win that fight. Ninja's coming off an <laughs> easy win over Tony Bonello. Guy I'd heard about a lot online, heard he had a built up record. Supposedly some of his fights had been works or fixed. I don't know if that's the case, but uh, he looked like he hadn't been in a fight with a real fighter once Ninja got in there. The stare down was funny. Bonello was talking a lot of trash, but um, once the bell rang and Ninja got him on the ground, it was all Ninja. So anyways, moving on to this fight. Benji's a good fighter. Ninja's a better fighter, bottom line, in my opinion. And I don't think it's just my opinion. Ben, um, Ninja's all-around skills. He's got good ground games. He's got pretty good striking. Coming off this win, you should have a lot of confidence off this previous win over Vanello. So I'm going to go with Ninja by third round TKO or decision. Third round TKO, we'll say. If Horowitz, who's not the biggest puncher, was able to knock out Benji, I definitely believe Ninja can do so. So I'm going to go with Ninja to win. After that, maybe he'll get a um, rematch with the winner of uh, the just signed Villa Senor or Robbie Lala rematch. If not, maybe he could fight someone like uh, uh, Phil Baroni. Don't recall if he fought him before or not or uh, Frank Shamrock. They're also in Elite XC's 185 pound division. So basically that's it. Hope you guys enjoy the fights. I'm looking forward to them. Hopefully they turn out well. We'll see how the broadcast goes. Um, like I've said before, feel free to drop a comment. If you agree with me, disagree, just want to talk about the fights, whatever. And um, I'll probably be trying to hit you back on Sunday and let you know how the fights went afterwards and what I thought. Until then, I'm out. Bye.